it was the worst day of my life. And you showed up with a big bag of craft supplies and you're like, what do you want to do? And I was like, all I want to do is watch Mary Kate and Ashley movies. Passport to Paris. Yeah. I spent like an hour trying to find a way to watch <laughs> this thing. We, it didn't even start and you were asleep. Learning lots. Learning lots. Bri and Jesse are learning lots. And you can learn lots too with Bri and Jesse. So you may notice something's different. Welcome to our new home. This is where we live. Yeah. We've been watching a lot of Bob Ross and we thought, hey, why not us? Yeah, we like to be in a void of we our own. We want to be in a void. So we're we're here. Honestly, it's because like I read reviews and people were like, your sound sucks in your garage. And we were like, okay, point taken. Yeah, so now we're in like a, a sound room. Anyway, welcome, welcome to the show. I'm Jesse. I'm Bree. And we're learning lots. Woo-hoo. Quick shout out to our YouTube friends. We have a full length podcast that we're making. This is just a highlight reel of that podcast. Yes, this episode. is just some greatest hits if you're <laughs> short on time and want to see our faces. If you would like to listen to an extended cut that is audio only, please click on the link below to check it out. We appreciate it. This episode is about friendship. That's correct. Which I do feel like we are very capable of talking about. I hope so. This is going to be very telling. <laughs> I um I really love being a good friend. I take pride in it. And I really love showing up for people. I feel really guilty if I can't. Like, if I have to prioritize myself, sometimes I'm mean to myself about it. Mm-hmm. Like, if, you know, I miss, like, a birthday or something. Are you looking at me? Did you miss one of my birthdays? I missed your birthday this year. Oh, well, it was COVID. So yeah. that's okay. I still feel bad. <laughs> I already <laughs> forgot. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's one of the good things about being friends with me is I forget pretty quick (laughs) (laughs) um something i wanted to touch on today is that uh my mom always told me that being a good friend means that you show up for people when things are bad so like if someone dies or if someone's injured or someone's sad you show up for them and you're present with them and then the other part is showing up for people when they're doing great which i kind of think is harder for some people to do it's i know it's so interesting when you brought this up in terms of because this, I feel like this episode is very your creation of, I've, I've, I have can't tell you how many times I've texted you being like, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, but this, this is the part that makes, it makes a lot of sense to me because in talking about being a good friend when the times are tough, it's so, such, it's so clear sometimes. You showed up for me in a very difficult time in my life. And the evening turned into what was like a devastating, <laughs> <laughs> devastating night. I love that we're laughing about it now. Turned into one of the most fun nights of my life. We stayed up so late. Mm-hmm. Uh, our friend Aaliyah Penner and I came to your house and we redecorated your entire house to change the vibe of what was going on in there. And it was really fun. I think we stayed up until the sun came up. Yes, we stayed up all night. We were in bikinis. I have a lot of Polaroids from that night. And it was it was amazing because it was just... There was just this energy to it. And I woke up the next morning and it was like, it was so magical. Like my best friends came in like little magical fairies and completely redid the house. (laughs) It made it look so cool. I just think it's important to like figure out how to enjoy the good stuff. Cause like, it's just boring to constantly be sad when your friends are doing well. If you're going to be there for them in the trenches, you got to enjoy that moment when you like get to the top of the mountain and whatever is going on that's great in your friend's life like a raise or winning an oscar yeah those kinds of things like that was so fun for me and i wasn't even there i remember screaming in my house like screaming couldn't believe it oh i could believe it i called it early but i you know watching (laughs) But that's the phrase i couldn't believe it it. (laughs) watching it come true was so exciting and i think it would be a real bummer if i had spent that evening just being sad that you were doing great yeah i i agree with that Uh, When I think of moments of success, moments where I've been stoked for you, I do think of premieres. Um, I think of, I'm going to, I'm getting emotional, but you looked really pretty at the Life of the Party premiere. Oh my God. I really was proud. Oh my God, you're so (laughs) emotional. (laughs) Really? It means a lot of things. And one of it is just because when we met, you hadn't quite stepped into like auditioning. I didn't have an agent. I was still in college. Exactly. So there was the culmination of that. And also you were walking, you were wearing heels, Mm -hmm. um, things that I, we were told you were never going to do. 
I mean, it's just like that for me is just like the culmination yeah. Yeah, of a lot of things and you being just so loved and respected that I was really proud. That I still feel like I'm emotional. Really about making it, me so. really happy. I'm <laughs> glad. I, I'm glad you shared that because I I didn't know. I'm happy that this podcast allows us to unearth the vault. <laughs> it's a deep vault. Um. Okay. So, how about our first guest? Our first guest is Nora McInerney. She's the host and creator of the podcast Terrible. Thanks for asking. And author of Hot Young Widows Club, a book for all people experiencing and adjacent to grief. Her mission is to redefine resilience through books, speaking, and living life after loss. Nora, thank you so much for joining us today to talk about friendship. Thanks for having me from my sweaty living room. (laughs) All right. So I was really excited that we got to talk to you because I specifically need help in regards to being a good friend to someone who's going through grief. When it comes to death, I get a little clammy and awkward. I just don't really know how to be supportive. Do you have any tips for me? How weird. You're the only person who has a problem with that. (laughs) Jesse, think about it. Grief is universal and the grieving is so, so individual. When people ask me like, how can I be there? I have like an, I don't know if it's completely foolproof because people are dumb, myself included, but I say, do what you can do and what you will do consistently, competently, and humbly. Mm. My friend, Hannah, after my husband died, she sent me uh, uh, several text messages and I ignored almost all of them. And what she did that I think is like the perfect illustration of what you can do and what you will do consistently, competently, and humbly is she texted me and she said, I'm at Costco and I'm going to be dropping off at your back door, toilet paper, milk, eggs, and butter. Mm. Like who can argue with that? Those are things that every person needs. And um, she did it. She just left it on the doorstep. She rang the doorbell and, and I waited until I saw her headlights pulling out of my driveway before I opened the door. And she just kept doing that. She just kept doing that week after week after week until I could open the door and look her in the eye. You've said before that um, even if your story makes people sad, you are not a sad story. Can you talk a little bit about that? And nothing really sucks the air out of a conversation like someone being like, so tell me about yourself and being like, well, my husband just died. Uh, um, and that was that was me. Pity is just you know the cheapest emotion. You can just throw it at somebody like sad confetti and it sucks to receive it. It holds you at this distance and says like, this is so sad, period. This is so sad. Ugh. Sick people, sad people, grieving people, like they want all the things that you want, right? They, they, it, it's, it's not as if uh, the cancer became his defining personality trait. It, it wasn't, he was still making things and designing things and, and, um, and being a fully formed person, and we all deserve that. Oh, where where do I go from there? Because what you said is so beautiful, and it was something that Jesse and I were talking about earlier. We've we've been friends for over a decade, which we love to brag about. Um, and in that, we've sat with each other through physical ailments, through breakups, um, the ends of other friendships, which have their own ways of taking you, their own eras that are ending in their own grieving process and sometimes it it's hard to um, not make it about you when when you're sitting on the other side of the person grieving of making it about your own incompetence of like why can't I heal them why can't I fix them I'm their friend I'm their closest friend I should be able to make this better and I love that you use like humbly as part of it because it's so humbling to recognize that it's an honor to just be witness to somebody experiencing their grief and living in it however it takes them. And I do feel like for those of us that have grieved deeply in whatever form that takes, it's almost like you've stepped into a portal. Um, It doesn't mean you always remember it, but I feel like for me, I I have a friend who's grieving right now, and I feel like I can step up in those ways that you're talking about because I understand the grieving process. But if I hadn't myself grieved, I, I think I would feel uh, like I was flailing and not knowing what to do. Yeah. And what you said about wanting to fix it, it's like wanting to fix it isn't about empathy. It is about yourself, right? Like you want to be the hero and some things just can't be fixed. And all the things you named too are grief, like losing a relationship that is that is grief even if the person is alive like losing a job all almost all of us over the past year are in are experiencing some form of grief it's not an interruption to life like this is life 
Mm. Life is all of the good things and all of these really, really difficult things. And then mostly in between, I would say 90% of life is like the gorgeously mundane things. Mm. I have one last question for you, which is how can you tell a friend that it's time to seek professional help? Oh, so, so many people tried to do this and I was like, I disagree. <laughs> but just like They were so right. Have you ever told somebody that you felt that they needed medical help or? Yeah, yeah, um, I have. And it's always very, like, it's very fraught. And I think also, I do think we have a responsibility to uh, to each other to say, like, what our capacity is to help another person, which is also, like, again, a, a part of, like, life and a part of friendship, like, I had expectations of people that they could never fill because they were not mental health professionals because they did have their own lives and that is okay. But I will say that the only reason I went to therapy was because my friend Tyler told me like, this is something that you need. Um, And I don't think that we can be friends unless you're going to take care of yourself in this way. So they set a boundary. Yes. He set a boundary and, um, and he had also gone, He'd gone and he was like, it really will, it will help. And uh, he's like, if you, if you go and you don't get anything out of it, um, I'll pay for it. Mm, wow. But I did get something out of it. Thank you so much for sharing with us. This was all really, yeah. really useful information. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I got like chills at certain moments when Nora was talking because it just spoke so deeply and so true and she is like an artist in the way that she's taken something that was really painful and has turned it into this whole other path which is what I feel like oh I mean that is art right Mm -hmm. it's like a way of expressing it in this new way thank you this is fire is it I think we're doing great thank you I mean and thank you and thank you and honestly thank you so much for being here Hi, we got fixed up for you. Oh my god, you look so cute. You look so beautiful. Okay, um, our next guest, Kate Laura Molili, our sisters and co-founders of the fashion brand Rodarte, a brand worn by all the legends like Beyonce, Michelle, Michelle Obama, Obama, Lady Gaga, and, and us. us. They also wrote and directed the film Woodshock starring Kirsten Dunst, have done numerous collaborations like a collection of rugs for the rug company and uh, a lot of other stuff. So needless to say, they are the perfect example of friendship through all seasons. Kate and Laura. Hi. Hi. Welcome, Hi. ladies. So the two of you are the brains, the beauty, the brawn. Is that the saying? <laughs> You're everything behind Road Arte. So you are a creative team but you're also sisters so are you a team or do you feel like you're competitive with one another that's such a good question I think as young kids maybe we were more competitive because it's just different and then slowly over time as we began to see our lives merging together creatively it became about we have this joint thing to achieve so I think the competition is put outside rather than in 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 an interior way. I knew at a young age, I should just actually team up and work with her because she somehow managed to move all of my heavy furniture into her bedroom. And my mom tells the story (laughs) that she was literally shocked. And she said, Laura, how, you know, how did you know to do? Cause she was too young to be taking a dresser and literally pushing it from one, one room to the other. And she said, well, I saw the movers do it. And I think we had moved recently or something. I realized I got to team up with this person because she knows how to get the job done. I love your mom, Vicky. She's <laughs> the warmest, most lovely, most inviting person. And I feel like I've learned a lot from her. Um, is there any specific lesson that you remember her teaching you about how to be supportive friends? You know, it's interesting because she's probably the person that taught us the most about that. And I think she's always been a person that's about kind of teaching us that, you know, surrounding yourself with the people that make you more creative. And when someone else is doing something incredible, that makes, you know, that is inspiring to you and only makes you that much more, um, you know, inspired and that you can go and do things and that relationships are the way that you can get a lot of inspiration. And I think it's important to try to see, outside of yourself and see the world through um, 
you know, different eyes. We feel this way about both of you, just that in a way our friendships are extended families. And so for me, it's just to see my friends and my family succeed. And I think in a, in a sense, the most successful thing that you can have is to be happy. Is it as easy for you to talk about like, hey, I'm struggling right now or I'm having a tough time with your friends as it is to celebrate? Oh, I 100% yes. think that's harder for me. Oh, really? I'm also more <laughs> quiet sometimes. Like it can be really like interactive and then I'll kind of go off into my own world. And Laura's a little bit opposite. I don't know if you would answer that differently. I feel like if I'm not over it really quickly, then I'll find someone to mention it to. And then, you know, I, I don't make a big deal about it, but talking about it always makes me feel better. You guys are so good at um, being happy for people. Like, I definitely think you're two of the more, like, I feel more comfortable sharing good news with you guys than, you know, a lot of other people. And you have a lot of successful friends. So I'm sure you've been on the receiving end of a lot of good news. Uh, do you have any tips for how to receive good news and how to be, how to have like a su supportive response to somebody instead of leaning into envy as I think a lot of us do? The first thing I would say is not to be so hard on yourself. I mean, it really is normal. It's hard to not feel envious, you know, like, oh, this really great thing's happening for someone else. Because I think what we end up doing is then saying to ourselves, well, that means that's not going to happen for us. And the truth is, is to be celebratory of someone's success does never takes away from what you're able to achieve. <sighs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Ugh. I love our friends. It's so cool to have fun, cool friends that we get to interview. <laughs> no, <laughs> they're smart and talented. It just feels like a long brag session. It <laughs> like, is. These are our friends. And, you know, it's like we talk about so many different things with them, but it's not like we've ever talked about friendship. That's one thing that I'm loving about doing this podcast is like we're topic focused. So we're diving into things that in a way that we might not have otherwise. Yeah. So what did we learn? I think for me, it's who are the people that lift me up, whether that's saying good news or bad news. Can I challenge myself to be more open with the places that I know are safe? Um, my takeaway is probably that being a really good friend to someone else can create an environment where they're now able to be a really good friend to you back. Like sometimes you need to lead by example. Well, thank you. For being here. Thank you for listening and spending this time with us. We hope you enjoyed it. We did. We sure did. <laughs> Have a good rest of your day. Bye. Learning lots. Learning lots. Bree and Jesse are learning lots. Learning lots.